Bad day. No. Ridiculous! Right, calm down. Calm down. This is ridiculous! Yeah, I'm pressing you for attempt murder, okay? I Just beg your pardon! Do not mention your question. I beg your pardon! Are you joking? You no, 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 no. Very upsetting time. No! I beg your pardon! I don't <laughs> not know! I'm not putting the mother of my son through this. A man sobbed on camera after being told he wasn't the biological father of his girlfriend's 12-week-old son, whom he was arrested after taking the child's life. Kane Mitchell, who was 31, from Cambridgeshire, was jailed for a minimum of 18 years for the murder of baby Teddy who died in hospital on November the 11th, 2019, after 10 days on a life support machine. A four-week trial at Cambridge Crown Court heard that Teddy had suffered injuries consistent with being gripped hard, shaken vigorously and having his head sh against a hard surface. Baby Teddy died with 17 broken ribs, fractures to his skull and collarbone, a bleed on the brain with spinal and eye damage. Kane Mitchell had been in a relationship with Teddy's mother, Lucy Smith, who was 30, and he told police he believed he was the baby's father. At 3pm on November the 1st, 2019, the ambulance service was called to Patterson Court, where Teddy was found to be unresponsive and in cardiac arrest. Lucy Smith had left Teddy in the care of Kane that day while she did the morning school run. Detective Inspector Lucy Thompson said of Kane that he is completely devoid of any remorse or empathy and that's the thing she found really hard. She said it's all about Kane and not what Teddy has been through. The police also spoke about Kane's behaviour. And when he was arrested, he was pretending to be a caring father while taken to the hospital with baby Teddy. He said, I don't effing think so. Oh my God, I would never hurt a baby. I'm not leaving my son. However, officers were able to prove Kane had taken the life of Teddy because of the types of injuries and how they were inflicted. You see, Teddy died as a result of his fractured skull and lack of oxygen. To the brain. Medical staff were concerned about how Teddy received his serious injuries and Kane and Smith, Lucy Smith, were both arrested. Police footage showed the couple being visited by officers in January 2020 after a neighbour reported seeing Kane strangling Lucy. But when officers arrived at the house, Lucy could be heard exclaiming, Is this a joke? I'm sick of you coming around here. Meanwhile, a teary Lucy separately told another officer that nothing had happened, adding, it's taking the piss now. The officer told her he could see marks around her neck and asked if that might be why they had been called to the apartment. But she said, it's probably my tan. He, being Kane, hasn't even touched me. There hasn't been no arguing here. Meanwhile, the officers went on to visit some of the neighbours, many of whom said they'd been left scared of Kane after hearing arguing from the apartment. Police returned to the apartment where they arrested Kane for domestic violence and common assault, but Lucy defended her partner. She said, You are not arresting him. I'm not staying here tonight on my own. No, he hasn't done anything. You're not taking him anywhere. Meanwhile, Kane exclaimed and began screaming at the police officers, You ain't got no proof. I ain't done F all. There's nothing on her. If anything, I've got marks on me. This is effing ridiculous. Investigator Lucy Thompson of the Major Crime Unit told the reporters that Lucy, we have good strong evidence to show she's a victim of abuse from Kane, but she's not taking any of the opportunities to acknowledge she's a victim of abuse. It would be quite unusual for us to say you are a victim and we know you are a victim. Kane was then brought in for a police interview with officers questioning the state of his relationship with Lucy. The bit of yeah. pushing on both parts. Yeah. But he insisted it's very verbal. 
I don't like having a row or an argument and then sitting down. He said, I need 10 minutes to reflect and get out and diffuse the situation so it doesn't escalate by her either lunging for me and me having to lunge back. Which to me suggests that he has lunged back before. The neighbours told police that it was a violent and volatile relationship. Something has triggered and either he and Lucy flipped and that's what led to the injuries to Teddy. The officer said they had been through his phone questioning aggressive messages between the pair. They recited one message exchange in which Kane had questioned why Lucy should be visiting the park with one of their children's friend's parents. The text message said, answer me. You don't understand you idiot. I've swore on my mother's ashes that unless you tell me Ross's second name before you are home, I'm abusing you, simple. Unless you tell me, I promise you, I'm going to take you into the bedroom and do it. Listen to me, I'm actually going to have to do it. In other words, Lucy met up with a male friend. He got jealous and demanded his name. Kane insisted it was just a threat and that he said I would never touch her. What kind of threat is that you muppet? What else does that suggest? And during the interview, the officer said she wanted to discuss Teddy's biological father. She said, we have had some DNA profiling back and the profiling has come back that you are not Teddy's father. He then, during the interview, Kane put his hand to his face as he appeared to cry after the revelation before saying, I feel sick. No, bitch, you are sick. Later, police said they had to be very careful with how they had interviewed him because he was on a knife edge of exploding. Meanwhile, Inspector Thompson said she wanted to give Lucy an opportunity to acknowledge she was a victim of domestic violence. Scared of, and the reason, that because you're scared, you are covering for them. However, when they sat down for an interview together, Lucy insisted she had no explanation as to how Teddy died. Meanwhile, she defended the text message exchange, saying every couple argues. She went on to say there had been a few from her boyfriend over the years, but I don't really see why this matters. She said just because he's going to do something like that doesn't mean he is going to do something to Teddy. The officer then went on, I'm going to ask you a question and look you straight in the eye. Kane has assaulted you on a number of occasions. And while they were having this conversation, Lucy could be seen acknowledging his violence. And she said, with me maybe, but he wouldn't do that to a child. It doesn't mean he would do anything to my children. I know he wouldn't do that because he loved that baby. He honestly loved that baby. I don't see what he did to me, why it matters. And then when officers said Kane wasn't Teddy's biological father, she burst into tears as well. Meanwhile, police went on to conduct an interview with the eldest of Lucy's children who lived with her and Kane. While the child was not identified on camera, their voice could be heard saying, Ugly Kane. I call him ugly because he abuses me and he strikes me on the arm. He basically got hold of my leg and dragged me in there and my head was on the floor. He was holding my foot and clenching it really hard. And Kane also broke mummy's mirror and his hand was bleeding. So mummy ran into our room and shut the door so he couldn't hurt us. She's explaining the incident in the death of baby Teddy. She went on to say he was trying to hurt us all. It made me feel sad because the glass was on the floor and mummy stepped on it. After the interview, investigator Thompson told the camera that Kane had tried to walk into traffic on a motorway. She said, God knows how he actually survived. He's got a fractured pelvis, fractured elbow, fractured ribs and a hand injury. Now eventually, with all the evidence gathered, Kane was charged with murder. Police then entered the hospital to alert Kane to the change in charges, finding him in a ward after these injuries where he was hit by a car. He could be heard saying this is absurd as he was arrested and removed from the hospital in a wheelchair. Investigator Thompson said when I first met him he presented you as you would expect from a grieving father. He has changed and showed the ability to change that persona at will depending on the circumstance he is in. He has been completely devoid of any remorse or real empathy for Teddy. That's the thing I find really hard. 
it's all about Kane and not about what Teddy has been through. Footage also showed Lucy being asked by detectives how her son suffered such horrific injuries, to which she replied, no idea. She then went on to say she would tell police if there had been any violence toward Teddy, he's my son at the end of the day and he means more to me than anybody. And it was revealed that social services and Cambridge police had been alerted to concerns from worried neighbours weeks before Teddy died. Now during the trial at Cambridge Crown Court, the jury heard how Teddy had suffered weeks of neglect and rough handling during his short life at the hands of Cain. A council spokesman said, A serious case review is underway and the findings should be published later this year. We cannot comment further until it's published. Investigator Thompson, who led the investigation, said, This was a tragic and terrible case in which an 11-week-old baby lost his life at the hands of a person who should have been there to protect him. Our year-long investigation found that Teddy had suffered multiple horrific injuries during his short life, which neither Mitchell or Lucy could account for. We hope it will encourage anyone with any concerns for a child welfare to come forward and report it to us without delay. In the trial itself, the jury were read statements from neighbours who said they had heard arguments coming from the address on a regular basis and that the household had been unsettled since Cain moved in. During the police interview, Cain said he believed he was the biological father. But of course, it was revealed to him that he was not. Now, Cain himself was sentenced to a minimum of 18 years in jail. Lucy was found not guilty of neglect after she didn't dial 999 for more than half an hour after seeing her child. The judge said the level of force required to inflict these injuries must have been massive and similar to those forces associated with a road traffic accident. So to conclude on what actually happened, right? They got into an argument, he gets into a violent rage, he takes it out onto the child and the child dies. Cain is a typical example of a man with no purpose. He doesn't have a sense of control. There's no power. So what does he do? He feels control. He feels power over this child. And as a man, we all like a little bit of power, right? We all like to be in control as men because I believe we're predisposed, right, to want to be in control, to take care of our women, to take care of our family, to take care of our children. You know what I mean? And sometimes, as men, when we don't have this feeling, well, it brings out the worst in us. Well, calling him a man is rather generous. Clearly, this man was a child. Anyway, comment. Tell me what you think.